Matt Ryan and the Falcons humiliate the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Jamal Charles still listed as questionable, and Carson Palmer will miss his second straight start for the Cardinals this Sunday. We've got our sleepers and busts for week three, and we'll answer your questions from YouTube and Twitter. All this and more coming up on today's episode of the Fantasy Football Swagger Podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Fantasy Football Swagger Podcast. My name is Nick, also known as Clickwid, and I am joined, as always, by my partner in crime, Dustin, also known as Project KSL. And guys, week three is already underway as we saw the Falcons absolutely destroy the Buccaneers on Thursday Night Football, and that's going to be our first topic of the day. Now, I think most people expected Atlanta to win this game, but not by 42 points. Right. Dustin, do you think that this is a case of a hot team just beating a team at their worst right now? Or do you think Tampa Bay is really this bad and Atlanta is really this good? You know, I, I think it's somewhere right in the middle because, I mean, every, I mean, Tampa Bay was such a trendy pick in the offseason. You know, the team's going to improve playoffs yep. maybe, but my God. God, they look bad. Just everywhere, that team looks so much worse than the talent level they have. And Atlanta still just has the shittiest defense ever. So, I mean, they're not should be taking that seriously. They're pretty good. Atlanta or Tampa Bay is pretty bad, but I'm not crazy about either one of them. I think it was just a crazy game. Do you think that the loss of Gerald McCoy in that game uh, played a big part, or do you think that this is kind of what we should kind of expect from Tampa Bay going forward? I mean, are they the type of defense that – in this kind of in this case this week, you pretty much could have started anybody on the Atlanta right. roster against the uh, against the Buccaneers, yeah, including seriously. their defense. Uh, are they the kind of defense that you now look look at like the Jaguars or like the Raiders or one of those type of defenses where you're pretty much starting everybody when they play the Buccaneers? You, you know, I have such a hard time committing to that because when we talk about teams like the Raiders and and the Jaguars, there's such a lack of defensive talent. True. And true. Gerald McCoy is such a big player, but that defense still has so many talented players. I, I, you think eventually the talent level shines through a little bit so that they're not just a doormat for everybody. <laughs> but I mean, right now, I mean, next week, depending on who the matchup is, I mean, I'm probably playing most players I have against them. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I think I kind of am too. Um, it, it's an interesting situation too, because I think that the fact that they have been so inept on offense actually plays into their yeah, defense being too. worse. Oh, yeah, they're way gassed. And, I mean, they end up having to be on the field so much more than they otherwise would be. And, I mean, for example, Atlanta hadn't recorded a sack through their first two games. Right. Yeah. And they got Terrible. three on Thursday. And yeah. they were just they were just causing problems in the backfield the entire game. They injured Josh McCown. And, yeah. Um, it's just one of those things where they just look absolutely horrible. The addition of Logan Mankins just apparently well, it hasn't helped them. Well, and he's been hurt, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, you, you look at these type of situations, though, where, you know, they, they try to make updates to their team, and it just hasn't worked out. I mean, Josh McCown, that, I think that experiment at this point is pretty much already over yeah. with. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I mean, the, the one thing is you look for, if it's just a one-year thing, and next year, you know, they get Marcus Mariota, whatever the top quarterback is, if they're that bad enough, it, it's like, who really cares, you know? But for yeah. the time being, damn, it looks like a bad choice. That whole team just looks like a nightmare. You're going to immediately question, is Lovey Smith the guy to do this? Yeah. I mean, he he was fired in Chicago, yeah. uh, went down there. and Real hit or miss in Chicago, too. Good seasons, bad seasons. Yeah, exactly. And But the thing is, though, is that he was always known for putting together good defenses. Oh, yeah, every year. Yeah. And what did they do this offseason? season? They oh, spent Michael every Johnson. single draft pick on offense. Yeah. They made only really upgrades offensively as far as, you know, bringing in new talent and, and uh, well, you I mean, know, they, they, they brought in Werner. They brought in They Michael did, Johnson. but they lost Maybe. Revis. Yeah, but fuck Darrell so, Revis. No, but <laughs> you, have to, you have to realize what I'm saying, though, here. I mean, you have to assume Altron Werner is a, is a downgrade from Darrell Revis. Sure, but I think so, Michael Johnson adding pressure could probably counteract true. that to some extent. Michael true, Johnson fair. Michael Johnson bust, too, for them, but... I think that's fair enough, but my point is, though, is, I mean, there is definitely a, a significant um, stance for them to look toward offense, and, I mean, it just hasn't worked out for him. Josh McCown looks absolutely incompetent at this point, and, I mean, he's going to be replaced by Mike Lennon. It doesn't sound like he's going to play at least this weekend. 
But yeah. you look Quite at it, and he was paid. Forward. He was basically paid as a high level backup quarterback, and he's given them high level backup quarterback numbers. I mean, you, you I don't. don't that's, that's generous. I mean, yeah, it is. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying, though. I mean, he's. I don't think he he's a like top shit. 32 quarterback in the NFL. In the NFL I really right don't. now. I mean, yeah, no. you're, I guess you're getting down to it if you really want to take Josh McCown or Geno for week three or week four, you know, or EJ Manning Gino, or some ass clown the, like that. I mean, the thing is about Geno is I see more upside. Like, I don't love Geno Smith right now. And I mean, you could probably make a case for him, for Josh McCown being better at this exact moment. But oh, like, yeah. We're talking about the future. It's a different argument. I just mean, for like yeah. week four, who would you rather have? I mean, you're getting down to it with the shittiest QBs in the NFL. Exactly. And I mean, that's the thing is you, everybody was so excited that they brought in Josh McCown and oh man, he's going to, and I was too, I fell for it a little bit. I, I mean, obviously I, mean, I wasn't to, expecting. They tried to replicate the, the Chicago offense. Exactly. Know, they drafted Mike Evans, they had the twin tower receivers. They dropped, they drafted ASJ, you know, to be the big tight end. And yep. it's just falling on their face. It's just been terrible. Yep. yep. And, and Doug Martin has not been Matt Forte. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's so, a big difference too. Yeah. So, I mean, we've got a, we've got a very big difference here in what he had in Chicago versus what he has here in Tampa Bay. But I'm just – and coaching staff-wise, I think, is the big thing. I mean, at this point, I think we're looking at the Chicago offense and um, how yeah, productive God, they've how been. Mark Tressman is. Yeah, yeah and just it, – it's been a very, very impressive thing with their coaching staff. I think they've turned it around offensively. Um, defensively, Chicago still has a long way to go. But yeah, they still terrible. The, the people that were calling for Jay Cutler to be removed from the starting role for, for Josh McCown, I think, have a little bit of egg on their faces right now because he looks freaking terrible down in Tampa Bay. So yeah. – with that being said, let's move on to our next topic, which is another injury situation, and that is Jamal Charles, who is listed currently as questionable. Now, Jamal Charles, obviously top three pick, pick in just about every single fantasy draft this season. He was the number one overall player as far as, um, you know, or I guess I should say number one running back last year, number one non-quarterback yeah. last year in fantasy. And he he has been really, really bad thus far. Um, you know, we, we've seen really not much fantasy production from him whatsoever in this Kansas right. City offense. They have looked absolutely horrible. Um, and the thing is, is that Jamal Charles now, with that injury, he is even lower. He's even being yeah. lowered even more. And he practiced on Friday, so I do think people are expecting him to play. But the, the really unfortunate 101%. thing... Yeah, and the real question right now is, and then on the, I guess the unfortunate thing for fantasy owners is that if he plays... You pretty much have to start him, even if he might be splitting uh, carries. I mean, do you? I think you do just because of the potential upside. And we've seen this type of situation before where it's like, oh, he's questionable. He's questionable. Brandon Marshall, for example, this past week, right. he's questionable. And then all of a sudden he comes out and just tears it the F up. So, I mean, we the unfortunate thing is that the injury situations in the NFL, the, the injury reports are such a joke. Um, we really don't get much of a, an indication based on what the players are going to end up doing this weekend. Yeah. So I think if Jamal Charles does play, um, obviously you have to have him in your lineup, in my opinion. But if he does play, Dustin, is Niall Davis worth still playing no. as a flex? No, nah, because I mean, it, in, just in my opinion, I, I think that they're both playing to shit show because I think if Jamal yeah. Charles is questionable, they're probably going to mix him in to where, you know, I, don't know, I don't know if it'll necessarily be a 50-50, but I think it'll be way 60, more towards 40, the 70, 30. Yeah, and, and when any of those type of situations, like, no, I definitely don't want the secondary back. Jamal Charles is the best player on that offense, and it's not even remotely yeah. close. So if he's ready to go, true. they're going to get the ball in his hands. Very and, true. And the one the one silver lining in that is at least when he got hurt in the Denver game, he wasn't even walking back to the locker room with a limp, which is why I'm surprised he didn't come back into that game. <laughs> yep. So he might be better than people think. Who knows? Very true. Um, we'll we'll definitely have to pay close attention to that one. Now, if Jamal Charles doesn't play this Sunday – I believe that Niall Davis moves up into being a borderline top 10 top running 10 back play. this week. Yeah, he's a top 10 play for me if, he, if Jamal Charles doesn't play. So, I mean, that's that's something to pay real close attention to on Sunday. Um, I believe they're a late afternoon game, what, a, a 3 o'clock game for us Central Standard Time uh, folks. So, I, sure I believe so. I mean, they're in I Miami. I believe they're a 3 o'clock game. Are they? Yeah. Okay. But... Uh, either way, we need to make sure that we pay attention to that on Sunday. Get all the information that you can. Um, we talked about this before. The one nice thing about Andy Reid, and we don't have a lot of nice things to say about Andy Reid, either of us. But Fuck Andy Reid. But I think that Andy <laughs> Reid is good in one aspect, which is that I don't really think he's the kind of coach Clock that lies. No, um, I don't think he lies about his injury report situation as much as other coaches do. Yeah. So. 
uh, you know, take that for what it's worth. Uh, don't, you know, obviously take it to the bank or anything, but, you know, consider the fact that if he says that Jamal Charles is likely going to play, he's probably going to play. So that being said, the next person on our list that we wanted to talk about, Carson Palmer. And this right. one kind of caught us off guard this past week because Carson Palmer looked like he was probably going to start. I mean, there really wasn't that much of a worry that he was going to start. But then Sunday came along and he wasn't out there. It was Drew Stanton. Right. And Drew Stanton looked meh, man. Like, he looked like... I got the ball to Larry Fitzgerald. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the one positive. I got Fitzgerald. I like that. Yeah, that's the one positive because Carson Palmer, what, targeted Larry Fitzgerald twice, three times maybe in week one? Right. And it seemed like Drew Stanton was definitely locked in on throwing the ball to Larry Fitzgerald. So we do like that aspect of things. But overall, obviously, this offense takes a step back with Drew Stanton being on the field. And the other thing is that, of course, Drew Stanton doesn't have the deep ball accuracy, the deep ball arm to get the ball to Michael Floyd. So, I mean, right. do you really consider Michael Floyd at this point? I know you were lower on him going into the season than I was. I was very, yeah. very excited about the potential of Michael Floyd with Carson Palmer being at the helm. And Palmer got him the ball in week one. But right. this week, with Stanton likely behind center, um, I guess it, as far as I understand, He's it's guaranteed start, at this yeah. point. So, uh, with him... Throwing the ball to Michael Floyd, do you even start Michael Floyd this week as no. a wide receiver too? No, I'm not starting Floyd. I mean, and going forward, I think pretty much, I, I think Michael Floyd probably had a higher, had a better value with Palmer, and I think it's the yep. exact opposite now because of the reasons you said. Yep. And also, it, the, the Palmer thing, we have no idea if that's going to get any, any or get better anytime soon. They're saying it's a nerve Very issue. True. They're saying it sounds like it sounds similar to what Peyton Manning was going through years ago. Oh, when they gosh. said he couldn't grip a football and it's a nerve issue, and he's just seeing if he can regain strength in his arm because he can't zip balls. So, I mean, we have no idea if this is going to linger or what. There's no timetable for this. That would be extremely unfortunate if he, if he had the same type of injury as uh, yeah, situation I mean, as Peyton Manning. It, it but... seems weird that we're not hearing anything about the neck if it is a nerve yeah. thing like that. It's just they're saying it's nerve. He can't grip a football. And it's just it's, it's until he can grip the football like he wants. Or mm -hmm. I should say it's since a grip. Spin the football like he wants. So Right, right, right. It's, it's a weird situation. But I definitely like Larry Fitzgerald ahead of Michael Floyd going forward by a lot. If Stanton yeah, is quarterback. I think so too. Um, I think Fitzgerald does take a, an uptick, oddly enough, with Drew Stanton at quarterback, just because I think that he's going to force him the ball more. Yeah, and uh, he's a lot better you know, Drew Stanton style of play. Yeah, and and Drew Stanton, I'm not talking about as a fantasy starter by any means, but I oh, think no. that Larry Fitzgerald himself does take a slight uptick in terms of uh, his overall fantasy value. Yeah. going forward at least for the little bit of the foreseeable future maybe the next couple of weeks here until Palmer does potentially get back on the field yeah so now guys let's talk about your questions and remember if you guys have questions make sure you tweet them to us either at Clickwood TV or at Project KSL or, or of course you can leave them in the comments section below we do like to grab those questions and answer them for you guys each episode we like to answer maybe a couple questions today we have quite a few so let's get right into them the first question that I have comes from Mr. James the Gamer on on uh, YouTube, and he says, Thank you, by the way, I picked up Julian Edelman, and he's done amazing. Yeah, yeah. Julian Edelman, that's one of the guys we loved going into the season, for PPR yeah. especially. And he wants to know who he should start between Jeremy Macklin or Emmanuel Sanders this weekend. Sanders at Seattle. That's the big one, of course. Yeah. So, Dustin, you are a Broncos fan. I'm sure that you're going to go with Emmanuel Sanders here, aren't you? No. No, I'm, I'm starting <laughs> Jeremy Macklin. The, the thing you're is, not your boy ES10. No, I know he's. I know he's my new favorite player, but like no, it, the only Broncos I'm starting this week is is Julius Thomas, Demarius Thomas, Peyton Man. I'm not starting Monty Ball. You crazy? If I have if I have other options, I'm not starting Monty Ball. I'm just not. Monty Ball looks like ass, despite whatever his fantasy numbers has told you. So Monty Ball is not a top twenty four running back this week. <sighs> I, if, I'm gonna I'm call you out on that if one. I have better. I, no, I mean in some in certain teams, absolutely you have to start him. But if you have other options, I mean if you're on a team that has let's say Alfred Morris. Le'Veon Bell and Monty Ball, and you can only start two. I'm not starting Monty Ball. Okay, fair. You no, know, I mean it fair. depends on your options, obviously. Or sure. Jeremy Hill, I'd probably start over Monty Ball this week, but okay. But again, no. I, Jeremy Macklin, he tore up um, uh, Washington the last time he played them, which was obviously true a, a year ago now. Yeah, but, quite a while ago at this. Yeah, point. but he tore him up, and and I think that he's established himself as the number one receiver there. Washington's defense is still pretty bad, and I think that, I think that it could turn into a shootout that kind of game, which I think is better value for Macklin. I don't think no matter what happens in Seattle, it's going to be a high-scoring game. So I, I don't think the TD potential is, is very, very good there. I'm probably going to go with Jeremy Macklin. 
Yeah, I, I think I agree this week. Uh, I don't like Washington's defense. They've been atrocious at stopping the pass for years. Um, the the Philadelphia offense seems to be clicking pretty well at this point. I mean, obviously, they've the been half. running the ball. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's kind of weird. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I mean, overall, though, at the end of the day, they've been able to produce. Jeremy Macklin only has four catches in each of his first two games, which I think is a little bit concerning when we're talking about. First game, though. I think he that, had 11, 12 targets in the first. That's the thing is he has 22 targets yeah. in his first two games, and he's only caught eight of them. So I think that the potential is there for him to increase. And it's not like he's been dropping passes either, um, at least not that I can recall. So I'm not too worried about that. I think that he and Foles will get better in terms of connection. And I do think that he has a p- higher potential upside this week than Emmanuel Sanders. Yeah, much higher so, upside for this week. Yeah, Point exactly. I way prefer Emmanuel Sanders, but agreed. This week, uh, yeah. Agreed. Yeah, it's it's a it's a favorable matchup for Jeremy Macklin and a super tough matchup for Emmanuel Sanders. The worst so, matchup Sanders will have the whole year. So exactly. So good good uh, question here. It's a it's a tough one, but I think that you got to go with Jeremy Macklin this week. Yep, I agree. So next question comes from Colton Fruling. Sorry if I mispronounced that. <laughs> and what he wants to know is he needs one running back out of these guys. I'm assuming, and it, I. Because he didn't say if it's PPR or not, we're gonna say, we're gonna assume it's standard scoring. So his running back options are Stephen Ridley, Niall Davis, Kyrie Robinson, Lamar Miller, or Pierre Thomas. Dustin, who do you have this week between these guys? Uh, if Jamal Charles is out and he's not playing, I'm starting Niall Davis one. If not, Jamal Charles plays, then I'm starting um, Kyrie Robinson because I really I really like their matchup. They're going to be in the dome. Drew Brees hasn't looked that good in the first two weeks for his standards anyways. Yeah. They're 0 and 2. They're going to have something to prove. Minnesota's not a very good team. They just got dicked by a bad Patriots offense. I re- and I really think Kyrie Robinson's a good back. I do. I think he's a talented back. And I think they're going to get up on them. They're going to run the ball. I could easily see one or two TDs for Kyrie Robinson. But the bigger thing, I think there's a very very small ch- chance that he actually has a terrible game and it's like, "Damn, I lost because of Kyrie Robinson." I'm definitely starting him. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see because this is the first game that we're going to see the New Orleans offense without Mark Ingram. And I know that sounds like really odd because like who gives a shit about Mark Ingram They've before this year? Him, yeah, he's been but, a big part of that offense so far. Exactly. He has just been an absolute monster in that offense. So, I mean, to me, it'll be very interesting to see what they do with Kyrie Robinson. I don't expect Kyrie Robinson to get the same number of total touches that Mark Ingram did. Um, I'll be completely honest with you. I'm I'm not quite as high on Kyrie Robinson as Dustin is. I do still yeah, I think he's him. startable this week. <laughs> uh, I think that he's a player that you should definitely look at. The guy that I'm looking at, of course, we both agree on this one. If Jamal Charles doesn't play, this is a no-brainer. You go with yeah, Niall Davis. Davis. But yeah. uh, if he does play... I th- you've got a first of all you have a plethora of good options here. I think every single one of these players, Stephen Ridley, Niall Davis, Kyrie Robinson, Lamar Miller, and Pierre Thomas, they all have their reasons that you would consider playing them. Whether it be that they're right. in a situation where they're now yeah, the one spot. guy, yeah, or you know, your backs. yeah, or favorable options. I mean, this is this is really not that bad. All these guys, like I said, have some sort of positive about them. I'm going to go with Stephen Ridley, and I know that sounds crazy because I hate Stephen Ridley most weeks. But <laughs> Oakland's I, a good matchup. I mean, yes, yeah, similar situation to last week where they were against the Vikings. Um, you know, the Patriots whipped the shit out of the Vikings. I expect them to whip the shit out of the Raiders, and I just don't see any situation where Stephen Ridley doesn't touch the ball probably 15 times this week, um, running the football over and over and over again. They're going to be up yeah. significantly in this one, and. I I actually like Stephen Ridley probably almost more than uh, than Shane Vereen this week, which is crazy because I'm super high on Shane Vereen. But uh, Stephen Ridley is still the guy there as far as the goal line carries go, at yeah. least. So oh, I one like. Thing, oh, one thing to add to that too is everyone thinks about the fumbling of Stephen Ridley. He hasn't fumbled in a long time. Yeah, I mean, everyone thinks it's oh man, he's fumbles all the time. He hasn't fumbled in a long time, and it's pretty clear Belichick at least thinks he's the best inside runner. So when those right. games are grinding away, I definitely think Stephen Ridley's a higher candidate for touches than Shane Vereen. Yeah, and Stephen Ridley is, uh, although we're not a big fan of him as far as personal talent level goes, uh, just just the opportunity this Money week. Moneyball New England, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and uh, so anytime we get an opportunity for touchdowns, we're going to go for touchdowns in standard scoring leagues. If yep. this was if this is PPR, I think that you can make a case for Pierre Thomas. Same um, Pierre. Yeah, just because he led the league in receptions at the running back position last year. Yeah. So he always has that possibility of having just those monster games where he gets eight, nine catches and 70 yards. So I like that question, but let's move on to the next one where we have Raul, and I'm just going to butcher this last name. This is brutal. Pathapuram? 
Rahul Pathapuram. Sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly, oh, guys. Uh, it's tough. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> botched that. But, uh, okay, he wants to know, this week, do I start Niles Paul or Antonio Gates or Jordan Cameron? And I think this is an interesting one because I think all three of these guys have their positives, just like the last question. Yeah, but, Dustin, which one of these guys are you looking at this week? You know, I think you have to ride the hot hand in Antonio Gates because he's been so good the first two weeks, even though he has sort of a bad matchup in Buffalo because Buffalo's defense is way better than anyone thinks. They are for the yeah. last couple of years. Yep. And But, I, I, again, I mean, if, if you disagree and you think that's going to be the reason, I mean, Niles Paul does face Philadelphia. Philadelphia still just has a terrible defense. Right. So I could totally see that. I, Jordan Cameron, I think, is on the end is the lesser of, of, the, of the three, obviously. Even though you drafted him first. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah but i i think for this week i think jordan cameron's firmly the third option i'm probably going gates but if you want to start paul i'm not saying oh my god no way agreed so, let's yeah. let's see what jordan cameron does before we start putting him in the back in our fantasy lineups if we have another option and this is something that we that i specifically talked about uh if you were somebody that owned jordan cameron i think that you had to target niles paul because if you were in a situation where you were in, you know, another one of your tight ends got injured, just because Niles Paul for the next few weeks here, I think will be a top 10 fantasy tight end. Yeah. So I do like him, but I agree with Dustin. Antonio Gates has been so hot. I mean, he's what the number two tight end in fantasy football right now, so, only yeah. behind Jimmy Graham. So uh, that's pretty good company to be in. I definitely like what I'm seeing out of Antonio Gates. He could slow down toward the end of the season, but for right now, he is in full health. He looks great. Phil Burrows is still points. throwing him the ball. Yeah, we but. love it. We love it. So I think Antonio Gates is my guy this week, and I'm not really thinking too hard about it. Mm -hmm. So next question we have from NBA, the NBA all the way, and he wants to know between two New York Jets for his flex position this week, are okay. we looking at Chris Johnson or Eric Decker? <sighs> And Eric Decker is still questionable for this yeah, weekend, by the way, Yeah, that's what guys. I was going to say. Is, I mean, if, if Decker's playing, then I'm starting Eric Decker. But I Agreed. think most signs are that he's not going to play. So you're kind of defaulted into Chris Johnson starting. But if, if Decker is healthy, yeah. I'm playing Eric Decker over Chris Johnson. Yeah, agreed. It, it all comes down to Eric Decker's health this weekend. If he plays, you play him. If he doesn't play, we go with Chris Johnson. And, you know, it's I don't think it's too much of a worry. I, I think that he has a much higher upside as well. Yeah, definitely. So, next question we have from FGCU Rack City, and he wants to know, which running backs do I start? He has a plethora of really good running backs here, and this is, uh, I'm going to assume again it's standard scoring. He says he has two running backs that he can start and possibly a flex. Based on these guys that he has, I'm assuming that we're going to give him a flex as well, but here are his okay. guys. He has Eddie Lacy, Alfred Morris, Rashad Jennings, Darren Sproles, and Niall Davis. So, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, it's a great <laughs> situation to be in. I, I mean, obviously, you've got your top five pick in Eddie Lacy. I think we both agree that as long as he's healthy, he has to be in your lineup at least at this point in the season. Yeah, um, Alfred Morris is one of the leading runners in the league so far this year. Not a PPR guy, but I'm assuming, again, that Standard, this is not yeah. a PPR league. Good matchup this week, too. Great, great matchup against Philadelphia. Not a great run defense. And then uh, we've got Darren Sproles, who has so far in every scoring format just been an absolute monster. I think he's the number tied for the number one fantasy running back in standard scoring leagues, as well as uh, in your PPR leagues. PPR. So, yeah. yeah, so, I mean, he has been an absolute monster. Niall Davis, obviously, if Jamal Charles doesn't play, I think we both agree that he's in your lineup here. You find a spot for him. Yeah. Um, but presuming that Jamal Charles is going to play, which we are. I think you got to go Sproles, Morris, and Lacey. What do you think, Dustin? Yeah, that's my three, too. I mean, it, like you said, I think you could monitor Niall Davis, but I still don't think, no matter what format, I don't think you pull Niall Davis for any of those three just based on the matchups. You have to play Lacey. Alfred Morris's matchup is great. Darren Sproles is the number one running back. I mean, you have to play Darren Sproles, especially against a great matchup like Washington. I definitely yeah. think that's the locked in three. Yep, agreed. Uh, Rashad Jennings, we both like as well for this yeah, week, but don't we? Too much other talent, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not a huge fan of Rashad Jennings for most weeks, but, I mean, this is a, a decent matchup for him this he's week. He's been and, good so uh, far this year, too, for his role. Yeah, yeah, he's he's been all right. It's it's always a matter of if Eli Manning's just going to throw the game away and they're going to be behind. <laughs> so, all right, next question. This is kind of a longer one. So he has uh, a 10-team standard scoring league, and he wants to know what he should do at wide receiver. This is Brandon Hatfield from YouTube, and he's asking – which guys do I uh, – who, who are my automatic starters? Which guys do I trade and who do I drop? He's kind of loaded at the wide receiver position. So here's who he has. Okay. Antonio Brown, Andre Johnson, Percy Harvin, Golden Tate, Marcus Colston, and Andrew Hawkins. Oh, yeah, so, Dustin, of which of these guys are automatic starters every single week? 
who should he be looking to trade and who should he be looking to drop? I think Antonio Brown is, I mean, he's obviously the best of that group. You start him every yep. week, regardless of matchup. I Agreed. think Andre Johnson is pretty close to that as well. Andre Johnson is, you know, he did, he did phenomenal last year with just horrible quarterback play. Right. Brian Fitzpatrick hasn't been dreadful. So I definitely think you still start Andre. He's still Andre Johnson. If you have to drop one of them, it's definitely Andrew Hawkins of, yep. among that group. Yep. And then if you have to trade somebody, I'm trading Percy Harvin because he's Percy Harvin. He gets hurt all the time. But also, his value is is significantly higher right now because people are seeing how he's being used. He's being used more in that Florida role that he had when he was still in college. And the rushes, I think, are there to stay for him until he gets hurt. And then I, I think his value is super high. And you could probably fetch yourself a running back or quarterback, a tight end, just based just with Percy one for one to the right buyer. So I definitely think that's how I'd lay it out. Well, let me ask you this, because you, you're you saying we should potentially trade Percy Harvin, and I completely agree with that. I, I'm in agreement as well. Antonio Brown is your every week rock-solid starter. Andre Johnson, you're going to start most weeks. If we're, if we're assuming that you start two wide receivers in your league, you pretty much are going to go with Antonio Brown and Andre Johnson every week. And then at your wide receiver three, you've got a nice plethora of guys that you can choose from and play the matchups with. But yeah. with Percy Harvin as a guy that you could potentially trade here, you've got a, a decent matchup here this week against the Broncos who really haven't looked that great in their secondary. Yeah. Although your boy has they looked pretty good. Yeah, like, say, a keep to leave. He's on Tlaib fucking don't start him. But yeah, well, my question, though, is that be. they've been moving to around a lot. My question for you, though, specifically has to do with this weekend's game against the Broncos, because I want to know if I'm a person that owns Percy Harvin, should I be looking to trade him prior to this weekend's game or after this weekend's game? Do you think that Percy Harvin has a good enough game this weekend that we're going to see his value take an uptick or is he going to take a down swing this week? I'm trading him at any point when he's healthy. (laughs) Because there's just any point. I mean, this this Sunday he could go off and have a TD and who knows, but... If he gets hurt, his value's tanked, and he's clearly shown a very, I mean, a very strong likelihood he gets hurt. Yeah. It's, just, it's been so prevalent with this guy. So if I'm offered something right now, I'm probably taking it because you don't know if he'll be healthy for week four. Very, very true. Good analysis. I, I think I pretty much agree with that as well. Um, if you can't find a suitor, though, uh, definitely look to trade him after this weekend as well, to pretty yeah. much regardless of what he does. The nice thing is, is that I think – a lot of people are going to look at how he runs the ball, and this is going to be a game everybody watches, which is always nice for fantasy. So if Percy yeah. does have a nice game this week, uh, look to trade him immediately. Everybody yeah. in your fantasy league is going to be paying attention to this Broncos-Seattle game, and if they see Percy Harvin tearing it up, his value will never be higher. Yeah, exactly. So definitely like that. I think uh, I think we're in agreement on that whole situation. Yep. So. Last question, and this comes from Jason Kirk on YouTube, and he wants to know, should I trade Reggie Bush if I already have Joyke Bell, or is it good if I have both in case of an injury? So, Dustin, what do you think about these situations where you draft both guys in a dual backfield? There's so few backfields that sh- that can work with. I mean, there's maybe— But it works here, right? No, yeah, it absolutely does, yeah. I mean, yeah. Reggie Bush and Joyke Bell, I mean, they both produce, and especially in PPR, you could start them both in a lot of weeks, and you can get fine production from both. I mean— that offense is just so high tempo. They score so many points most weeks. You know, there's so many snaps to go around. There's so many plays to go around. So I, I, I think you could probably keep them both, and especially in case of an injury, then one immediately his value jumps significantly if one goes down. Right, right. So you wouldn't want to trade the wrong one, I guess, in that scenario too. And I mean, and Joyke Bell's had more time on the field. Reggie Bush has more yards. Joyke has has a tendency to score more TDs, more catches, but they're both very, very good for fantasy. I'd probably hang on to them. Yeah, I, I pretty much agree with that as well. Uh, if you're in a situation where you you are stacked at running back and you're looking to make an upgrade at another position, I do think that you want to trade one of these guys. And I think Dustin and I would probably agree at this point, although I'm higher on Reggie Bush than I Dustin love is. Bell. I don't know. How uh, I agree. I love he's a Joke big Bell. he's a big Joyke Bell guy, but I think we both agree here that Reggie Bush is the guy that you want to trade. And although I actually oh, okay, have Reggie yeah. Bush ranked ahead of Joyke Bell going forward, uh, and we asked, we were asked this question, I think, in week one, which one of these guys is going to be better. And so far, it's been Joyke Bell for sure. Dustin's been right on that. But uh, I still believe in Reggie Bush. I still think that the talent level is, is significantly higher for Bush than it is for Joyke Bell. But my point that I'm trying to make here is that Reggie Bush, I think, still has the perceived value of being higher than Joyke Bell. Yeah, so exactly. I like to trade both of these guys, or I like to trade him out of the two of these guys just because his value is perceived to be higher so you can get more in return for Reggie him. Reggie Bush has a bit of injury history too. So True. Very I think true. That, that could happen too, yeah. I'd, I'd hang on to Joyke among the two if I had to trade one of them. 
Agreed. All right, so that pretty much does it for our questions this week. But uh, if you guys have any questions for us, like I said, make sure that you tweet them to us either at ClickWith TV or at Project KSL, or make sure that you leave them in the comments section below. But I want to give you guys now our our uh, busts and our sleepers of the week. So our busts of the week are guys who are normally going to be in your starting lineup, but guys that we actually don't like to be in your starting lineup this week. If you have any other even solid options, we're looking at guys uh, who are probably ranked you know, top 24 at their position this week, roughly, and we want to make sure that they're not in your lineup, like I said, if you have another viable option. So my bust of the week this week is Andre Ellington running back for the Arizona Cardinals, who is going to be up against the San Francisco 49ers, Mm -hmm. and he has been disappointing this far. He hasn't scored any touchdowns through two games, and I think a lot of people are just going to automatically see that the Jonathan Dwyer situation where he's suspended for the foreseeable future, and they're going to assume that Andre Ellington's going to step in and just get more of those goal line carries. Yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. No, Arian I, said completely something. He said that it was it Parmeal's going to get the carries now around the goal line, so... Yeah, so, I mean, that's that's just an ugly situation. Um, obviously, we like Andre Ellington for PPR leagues at least somewhat going forward. I think he's an RB2 going forward. But this week, it is a brutal situation. He's going to have Drew Stanton at quarterback. Uh, the defense is going to be keyed in on the run. And they just got done holding Matt Forte to 36 total yards in a game that the Bears won last yeah. week. I mean, the Bears won that game, and Matt Forte had 36 total yards, man. It's brutal. It's a brutal, brutal defense to try and run against. I think in a 12-team league, Andre Ellington is a borderline running back two at best. And I'm I'm liking a lot of other guys this week. Guys like, you know, Lamar Miller I like better than Andre Ellington this week. I really really? do. I think that the potential is higher for him this week. He was so bad last year. Oh, yeah. Lamar Miller's brutal. But I'm just throwing out names of guys who I think uh, are probably ranked around a similar spot. But uh, I'm, I'm just not high on Andre Ellington this week. There are a ton of other guys who I think have a much higher upside. Stephen Ridley, for example, who is not normally a starter, um, I think has a much higher upside this week. So, Dustin, what do you think about that situation? Do you agree with me that Andre Ellington's not a great starter this week? And who is your bust of the week? Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely exploring other options because I, I don't think I'd want to start Andre Ellington this week. Like, I mean, pretty much for every reason you said, 49ers always have a good defense. Andre Ellington hasn't been that good. It's not like he's still, he's still hurt. We talked about this in one of the first ones we True. did. He's still probably nursing that foot. So who knows? Um, uh, my bust of the week is Steve Smith who is everyone's talking about Steve Smith, how much better he looks in Baltimore, all the targets going to him. Joe, he just looks like Joe Flacco's go-to guy, yada, yada. The hype on him is unreal right now. Mm-hmm. And, he, I mean, he faces Cleveland. He's in Cleveland. Baltimore has been abysmal on the division on the road lately. And I, I think that generally in that matchup, Torrey Smith gets covered by Joe Hayden. But you have to think with the way Torrey Smith has basically been a non-factor for this season, you have to think he covers uh, Steve Smith. Mm-hmm. And I think that'll effectively limit Steve Smith. I mean, Joe Hayes better according to Steve Smith as wide receiver. So I think that he's going to be in for a very minimal game. And I mean, again, the hype's unreal with him, but I'm not playing him if I have other options. Yeah, it's it's definitely not a great matchup for Steve Smith. I don't really perceive him as being a top 24 wide receiver uh, and every week starter going forward, to be completely honest with you. I think he's kind of borderline on that level. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about it. Neither one of us is really that bad on Steve Smith. Yeah, and I think right now... there are, though. I think right now, if you're in a situation where you own Steve Smith, you might not have a better opportunity to trade him. There might be somebody in your league who's seen what's going on there, and they're just in love. Uh, they Kool-Aid, they remember yeah. Steve Smith from 2009, and they think that they're going to get that guy again. And I just don't, I just don't see it happening. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So let's talk about our sleepers for the week. Dustin, you have a guy who you've been high on through yep. the preseason, who's looked good College. in the regular season thus far. I mean, the guy looks yeah. like an absolute beast. Who do you got? I have Jeremy Hill. And, I mean, we talked about this for a while. I loved Jeremy Hill coming out of college. I thought he was a beast at LSU. I thought he was a really good fit going to the Bengals. They released uh, Ben Jarvis Green Ellis to give him the role there. He went off last week versus Atlanta. He's a really good matchup this week. He's home against Tennessee. The Titans just got absolutely ran over by Dallas. And I don't, I'm don't. i not necessarily down on Gio Bernard because of this, but I also think that Jeremy Hill, if you have him on your team and you're looking for a flex player, if you have one of these teams where Jamal Charles is already hurt or Adrian Peterson or whatever the case may be, I'm definitely starting Jeremy Hill this week. I expect him to have a very good week. 
Yeah, Jeremy Hill is definitely an underrated guy for this week because Cincinnati could end up running the ball 40 times in this game, yeah, exactly. seriously. Um, they could run the same type of offense that the Cowboys did last week where, like you said, they just ran and all over them. And they're better fit them. for it, too. Yeah, sick O-line, two good backs. Yep. Hand it off and go. Sick defense, too. Very, very nice situation for Jeremy Hill. Uh, he's one guy that I would I would say I start over Andre Ellington as oh, well. Yeah. This oh, week. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Without Love question. the matchup. Uh, definitely a good one uh, for your fantasy lineups this week. Now, the guy that I'm going to be putting in here as my sleeper of the week is somebody who I don't necessarily, I don't know. It's kind of a, a tough thing because I don't know if he's necessarily considered a sleeper, but I still think a lot of people are sleeping on the fact that Ahmad Bradshaw for the Indianapolis Colts is straight up a better running back than Trent Richardson oh, yeah, at this point close. in time. Yeah, it's not even close. And, I mean, he was the number one or the number two guy, I guess I should say, on both of our waiver wire lists this week. Yep. But he's still only owned in 62% of ESPN leagues. That is just blowing my mind, Anyone man. that's listening and he's available, go pick him up immediately. Drop whatever you need to drop. He if you're in owned. an eight-team league, I don't care if you're in an eight-team yeah, league, you format. need to own Ahmad Bradshaw yeah, right now. For anything, yeah, pick he, him up. He is their guy uh, for the foreseeable future, in my opinion. I know he didn't have as many carries as Trent Richardson this past week, but he actually was on the field for 15 more plays yep. than Trent Richardson. Uh, he caught two touchdowns. He was their goal line guy. Um, I mean, he's done passing game a lot, too. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I personally believe that Ahmad Bradshaw is is the much more productive of these two players. Indy's offense is good enough that they can give you a viable week-to-week fantasy starter at running back. It's just yep. that Trent Richardson hasn't been that guy, and it sucks because both of us were pretty high on Trent Richardson coming out of college. The guy just looks like absolute shit at this point, though. Yep. Um, he's an absolute Terrible bust. Trade. He looks just horrible. Now, this is an amazing matchup this week for Ahmad Bradshaw and the yep. and the Colts as they go. Uh, they're going to be up against the Jaguars, and the Jaguars have been horrendous at stopping the run this the culture, year. Though. Yeah, yeah, they're changing Josh their Bradley's defense. Just changing now, the culture in Jacksonville. They looked good for about a half of football against the Eagles. And then they got ran over. They've yeah. allowed almost 300 yards of rushing in two games this year. Yeah. So they I love Ahmad Bradshaw. Down. I think he's an excellent RB2 this week and potentially an RB2 going forward. I, I think you got to start getting on it now. Uh, hop on that bandwagon while you can be, before uh, it gets too full for you. So. Yeah. That's going to do it for this week's Sleepers of the Week and our Busts of the Week. And that's actually going to do it for today's episode. So thank you guys so, so much for tuning in. We really do appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you did, make sure you press that like button below and also press the subscribe button so that you get that update when we do put out a new show. Now, if you have any questions, make sure that you guys leave those in the comments select section below and we will do our best to answer them on our next episode, on which Twitter will be too. out early next week. What was that? I said on Twitter too. Oh yeah, and on Twitter too. Make sure that you leave them on Twitter at Project KSL or at Clickwood TV. That's another opportunity for you guys to uh, ask us questions. If you if you see us favorite it, it's a good opportunity. We're probably going to answer that question from you. So, thank you guys again. We do appreciate all the support. Good luck this weekend, and we'll talk to you guys next time on the Fantasy Football Swagger Podcast. Bye bye.